kind of a tough market out there. The uh, um, with uh, the the home sellers, uh, the, a couple things that realtors fight. Uh, we we sell the homes and the homes get sold in two days. It looks like you haven't really earned your money. Sure, but there's a lot that goes into what we do. I've got to recommend that these sellers price the house right, and then we really become the experts at at vetting the right offer and making sure that that the 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 right person is buying the home, that the lender that they have is doing the job that they're supposed to do and that you can count a loan being closed. Sure. And, uh, it, you know, there's so many other pieces that go in to make sure that we're not just grabbing the first offer that hits the table. We actually want an offer that's going to close the house and get the home sold to the right person. I think you made an interesting point about it. It may appear that you as the agent who is selling a home is not earning enough or earning the money when it sells in two days for, I suppose, the two reasons. One, it took two days to sell. And B, well, geez, could we have gotten more? I mean, that right. must be the two side, the two things you're dealing with. Right. But it's not always about getting more. It's about getting the best. Right. You know, we do all of the pre-marketing ahead of time to make sure that the home is priced right for market conditions. These market conditions are a little extreme. So it's, it's pretty uh, common to get a house that you've done all your pre-marketing on and you put it on the market and it sells uh, within two days for more money than we've got it on the market for. So it looks like, what what did he do? You sure. know, he, he priced it too low, right? And then we get 10 offers on a house. So our job then becomes really important Again, we, we to earn our money, we got to make sure that we get the, the the best money down. We get a buyer that's engaged and that has been represented personally. Sometimes that makes all the difference in the world. A good cover letter, you know. Uh, the homeowners that have been in the house for thirty years don't want to just sell to uh, Joe Investor mm -hmm. necessarily. Sometimes they'll want a nice family to come in and stuff. So uh, your your selling agent has to have a good foot forward, and as a listing agent, we have to be able to pick through and recognize what's best for the client. So when, as a seller, I mean, what effect does this start to have on them? Because you're bringing in so many different factors to the table that maybe if they had bought a sold or home, as you said, 30 years ago, this is certainly not what they were dealing with. And oh. so this is almost like their first time going through a pretty different style of real estate uh, transaction than maybe they've grown accustomed to. Right. It's it's a little awkward. The, uh, uh, the, the hardest part, I would say, for sellers is pie-in-the-sky expectations. You have a certain group of sellers who come onto the market and think, well, they're here in, in the paper and, and mm -hmm. all the conversation about how houses are selling for more than they're worth. So they price their homes 10, 12, you know, 20% above what market value is. Those homeowners are really paying the price because they may be one of five or 10 or 100 homes that sit on the market for, you know, 30 days where their neighbors and their friends are selling in, you know, five minutes and multiple offers and stuff. So, five uh, minutes. It was yeah. two days, like a few minutes ago. Now it's five minutes. And I'll tell you, we Unbelievable. Hit, we, we, we've hit a home the other day that came on the market, uh, had been on for two hours. There were nine cars parked in the cul-de-sac when we got there to show the home and agents lined up to take a look at this house. The problem was that the listing agent had priced it forty thousand dollars below market value, so it created this crazy frenzy where they ended up with thirty offers on the house and over asking price. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the flip side of that is that once it goes into contract, we run into problems with appraisers, which is really where our expertise comes in. Two hours, nine people. I mean, it's like chomping at the bit. I can only imagine. Right? No, it's crazy. And you, you know, again, you have to navigate. Not only the other agents, but you have to navigate with the listing agent who, and sometimes, you know, if, if we take a property that's a super hot property, no way we can answer a call every five minutes on that property <laughs> for three days. Sure. So we have to put things in that say, you Please know. Please don't call. Don't call. No, I'm just you know, kidding. <laughs> that's, that's what we say. Don't oh. call. Text, email, you know, we'll respond as we can, and then, you know, we'll navigate through the offers and stuff. But yeah, ultimately, the job is for us to get the most bang for our customer's buck when we right. get the house on the market, you know, but then we have to close it. And I, I have a quick stuff. question on the, on the not taking calls. Yeah. <laughs> Do people tend to call and ask you questions that they could otherwise verify if they were to like maybe read the listing or. Sure. But there's, and there's no problem with talking to those people. Right. But, uh, uh, those people are not always calling just to get that information. They're really trying to make that personal connection. On the buyer side, uh, as a buyer's agent, which I act sometimes, I'll pick up the phone and call to form a personal relationship with the listing agent so that if he's looking at 30 or 35 offers, I've got, he's going to say, hey, that guy called me. I talked to him. He knows who I am. And I do the same thing. If I pick a call from a persistent agent and we connect, there's some small edge in the deal 
that I, I remember. Just that an they were emotional easy to work with. edge that you give somebody. That's right. Interesting. Right. Uh, Jesse, so how do you recommend that people sell or, I guess, market their home in a market like this differently than you've done in the past? I got to tell you, I, I've got to really reel in people's expectations. Price the home right, make sure that it's ready to go, and be prepared to look at more than one offer and and take the advice of your realtor on on what constitutes a good deal. Don't necessarily look at a number. Just because an offer is $20,000 higher than everything else you're looking at doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to close. And be wary of people who um, represent that they're buying one way in order to lock the deal up and then convert to another way. So mm-hmm. in a market like this, a cash offer obviously is, is almost a fail-safe. But what we've seen now is people writing cash offers and then after the deal is tied up, uh, coming back in and trying to convert their financing to a financing deal rather than a cash deal. So we really have to watch for pitfalls like that and make sure that we're, we're really seeing through the paperwork to make sure we've got what it really is supposed sure. to be. Well, it sounds like a lot of it isn't necessarily the marketing of the property. It's the beginning of the transaction that's changed. Right. Absolutely. It's a lot more personal. It's a lot more, um, as a listing agent, who's your lender? Uh, who's buying this house, who's, who's really buying this house, can they close the deal, and uh, can we get to the end of the, the transaction without too much drama? Because in the, in the same case, my seller is looking to buy somewhere else, and he's got to depend on this transaction in most cases to buy his new house, and he's in a tight deal there. So the next listing agent is going to be really looking at our transaction here to make sure that it's okay. Did you ever think that the mortgage lender on a deal would be so significant in which lo- which Contract to select. Yeah, you know the the lender. I mean, has, did you ever think that uh, the lender has always been important? Always sure. been important who you deal with, <laughs> and and we know as a group of agents, we know the companies that 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 are having trouble closing loans or they're having trouble pulling their money together, and and just like every other industry, I mean, we 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 we, we always say that the uh, there's only ten percent of of the agents in this marketplace that are active, and we circle around to the same ones, and the same is true with lenders. There's a a, a high group of lenders that we know, if we see a deal from them, pretty likely that it's going to close. We also have a group of lenders that if we see their approval letter on a file from a buyer, we run as fast as we can in the other direction. Yeah, it seems like there's much more of this team mentality around the entire transaction because it, it takes a village. Right. Has to be, you know, two years ago. It's a village to buy a house. (laughs) If we saw an offer and it was from a lender that we absolutely knew was going to have problems, that may be the only offer we see for four months. So we're forced to, uh, I say, drive a broken car. You know, if you got a a bad engine, you don't take your car and try to drive it around the block. But uh, in that market, we 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 hooked up with bad lenders and did business with them because there may not be anybody else. Sure. What, what do you find that sellers are most nervous about right now? I mean, there's obviously the lending component because they're the recipients of the money that the other person is borrowing. But what what else are sellers really nervous about in this market? Because even when things seem like it's going to be smooth sailing, they never really are, especially in a transaction they, this big. And they the worry a lot because they, they know about the lenders, uh, the lender problems, mm-hmm. especially the last two years. It's just historical that the lenders are, are really vetting the, the, the files and, and the, there's last minute problems. We're also really worried about appraisals. We're having a, just a huge problem with um, w- we were in a multiple offer situation. We had five offers. The second day we went over asking price by 10 percent. Um, just a crazy frenetic scene trying to get this house into contract. And then we're 30 days in. Our folks are prepared to move out of state. We get the appraisal back, and the appraisal came in low. And we're trying to talk to the appraiser and say, hey, what's going on here? We had multiple offers. People were bidding on this house. And the appraisers are stuck to a guideline where they have to have proof of sales to justify the pricing. So what that does is throws the whole transaction into a mess. People have to bring money to the table, and it changes the – uh, the whole term that I think that's where sellers are are really stressed, and we try to you know tell them that up front so they know, especially if you go at, over asking price, uh, that 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 appraisals can be a big issue for them. Which really creates even a stranger situation when somebody offers you the most money for your house and you don't select it because you don't think the house is worth that, even though somebody's willing to give you that much money. That's right. That, that's kind of crazy. Right. But that, again, it, it all comes down to where financing is. You're exactly right. If the house is only worth 
say $300,000 and you generate offers up to $350,000, but there's no comparable sales, it's pretty hard to accept an offer like that when you know you're just buying a problem that's three or four weeks down the road Mm -hmm. and going to have the same thing. Of course, that's when we look for cash buyers who actually have proof of funds and can make it happen. Or real big down payments. That's right. Big down payments. But again, if they're financing, that appraisal still is a big deal, even with big down payments. It's uh, it screws the whole file up. It's pre- it is interesting to see what can happen and, and all the different arms of the deal that really do come into play. It's like every line on the contract on the offer right. actually means something now. And, uh, you know, Absolutely. in years past, it's been so, it, you know, it's been, yeah, fill in the call, fill it in. And, You're exactly and right. And now it seems to be much more, uh, everything carries a lot more weight. That's right. It's a whole different world.